All right, welcome to another edition of the BS Sessions. What's up, Jerry? What's going on, man? Nothing, man. I'm just getting over a freaking miserable bout of pneumonia, man. It was freaking deafening, man. I'm just glad to start feeling better, man. I know you missed two episodes of Freeform we recorded on some Saturday it seems like and it's, Monday. It, it seems like every time, you guys always do that. Every time I have to miss the show, you do another bonus show. It's like, <laughs> do you guys yeah, miss me it. that much where you got to cover, you got to like, you know, you know, <laughs> cover for it or something? I don't know. No, we got drunk on the video, me, him, and Lee, and we said, let's do this. Let's do that. And we we're like, yeah. yeah, let's do it. I'll ask Jerry. And Jerry said, I can't. So, yeah, I really want to do that Chicago well, you album. You did have your, your track of the week and you did have your track, your song pick in there because I go, okay, Jerry, you picked this. And I went, Jerry, Jerry. Oh, wait, he's yeah. not here. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, man. Yeah. I thought it was funny. But what's going on, man? Nothing, man. Um, just uh, like I said, I'm starting to feel better. Um, looking forward to doing a show on one of my favorite bands. And uh, first of all, let's welcome our guest. We've got Al Horder from the Be Cooler Be Podcast out. Hey Shay, guys. What's going on, man? I'm doing hey. good, man. How you guys doing? Did you get a good uh, uh, nap or something there, man? I got a little one in. Okay. <laughs> and then usual, it's, we got... It's all go good. ahead, sorry. Uh, it's all good, then, man. And then we got from the Black Spinner podcast, uh, Andy Rodriguez, uh, one of our MVPs of the show, man. How are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me on here again. This is going to be fun. Yes, all right, it is. Jerry. Go for it. No, I'm good. Uh, and then, you know, our main host, Mark Alden Taylor, you know, what's no, up, no, dude? No, 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 We, I'm just the one who keeps the show moving along. <laughs> you don't want no part of Yeah, no, we got to get off this. We got to get, we, get I, this I off. No, we're going to get we off this We had this quick. talk yesterday, man. Yeah. <laughs> I am Mark. You are Jerry. We both run this show. And Charles is here also. I got his list. So Charles is here in spirit. Works oh, a shit ton of hours. And he's like in fucking Europe. So it'd be like four in the morning right now for him. Who wants to get up and fucking? Form but one morning? thing, Charles, Charles will never miss a Beatles show. Case in point, last night he <laughs> yeah. did miss it. He did miss. Oh, he wasn't there. He no, wasn't he there. I thought he was there. Oh, no, okay. he sent me a message. And thanks for watching, Jerry. Um, well, he I, sent me, <laughs> I he shared sent me it. A Dude, I guess this is the much. first. This, this, this is the first night where I've actually been out of bed longer than an hour, yeah. man. No, no, I'm just playing. He sent me a message yesterday morning <laughs> saying that he's been been working way too much. And that yeah. he doesn't have anything ready, and that he's just dog tired, man. So yeah, that's why he but doesn't do that, the man. show. He he yeah. does Saturdays for free form, or like if you do them on a weekday in, in the middle of the afternoon, eleven a.m. here in the Pacific. <clears throat> he's good to do yeah. shows then, but everybody's working, <laughs> so uh, that's why we do it early on Saturdays. But uh, man, right. what are we doing, Jerry? What's the topic of the show before we get into the BS here? We're gonna do the uh, a one and done with the. Uh, uh, Pink Floyd discography, everything except for the Endless River, which a lot of people kind of dismiss, but I don't. I kind of like some of the riffs off it. Uh, cool thing about Pink Floyd is there's hardly any uh, all the way through the errors fans. It's always certain errors. Like some people don't like the Sid area. Some people don't like the the post Roger era. Uh, but I kind of like them all. Um, one of my favorite bands. I guess technically they haven't retired yet. I guess Nick and David still. I guess they did that thing. Last year with the uh, what the Russian Ukraine war, I don't remember the name of the song at the moment. It was, wasn't, oh yeah, wasn't oh yeah, good. I remember what song you're talking about. But yeah, I mean, what a cool band, dude. I mean, they were pretty awesome in their days, man. One of the best, in my opinion. So, topic that I've always Pink Floyd. I'll talk about Pink Floyd. It's like you guys as Beatles, them and Led Zeppelin. I'll talk about all day. So this is going to be a fun show. So, all right, man. Let's get into the. Uh... BS. And before we get into here, we should ask our MVP and, and weakest link of this band before we get into the our tracks, because I think those are fun. Uh, but let's get into BS, man. I, I, I got a little rant. I didn't tell you guys this because I just want I just thought of it today. I, I'm just tired of me being me and people blocking me for it. <laughs> it's like, God damn, I didn't attack you. I didn't do shit to you. But it's like I give an opinion and I say enjoy yours and I get blocked. I get yelled at. I get like, it's like, dude, I love other people's opinions. Fucking Jerry rags on me for fucking extreme and some bad firehouse. I like, man, he's like, it's cool, man. It doesn't bug me. We can't all like the same thing, but I'm not a dick. Like I said today, I may be a dick, but I'm not rude. 
you know, I don't sit there and fucking tell you your opinion's wrong, your opinion sucks, or you're an asshole. I only do that when people start calling me names first. <laughs> then I retaliate. But I just give opinions, man. I, I'm being me. I'm not trying to change for anybody. If you guys need me, I'm there. But I'll come up with a sarcastic fucking shit. I'll fucking I'll bust your balls, but it's it's nothing. I get my balls busted. We go back and forth. Why can't everybody do that? Why do people have to get so sensitive and so fuck you, blah blah blah? It just it just pisses the shit off on me. But that's about it. I just wanted to rant about that. I, I did make a fuck you video about that too. <laughs> so, but uh, why do you think, man? I, I'm getting called like a narcissist and. And, and freaking high and mighty and whatever. I, I don't feel I'm, I come off that way to people because I just, I'm not judging anybody, man. Any Silence. thoughts on it, Jerry? <laughs> Asshole. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want us to respond to that? Well, I want Jerry, I want to know, do you guys see me being a narcissist or a dick or do you like, Al disagrees with me half the time and I don't get pissed off at him. I go, yeah, good point. You know, I just go, well, my opinion, I don't like it or something. You know, that's it. But you tell well, somebody. I mean, friends should be able to disagree with yeah. each other. And, you know, it's, uh, I mean, listen, man, these are, these are internet friends, bro. And it's not really people you probably don't even know that well anyway, dude, that are, True. you know, I mean, I mean, we know each other well enough, you know, we do podcasts with each other and I consider you guys good friends and shit, you know? So, I mean, we understand each other a bit better, but when you're, when you're dealing with like fucking 4,000 friends on your friend list, bro, you're not going to know everybody <laughs> like <laughs> intimately. I bro. try, I try to comment on everybody's thing saying, hi, what's going on? Yeah, but you know? you know what? It's not, it's not okay. the same though, dude. You don't really know the inner workings of a lot of people, bro. Yeah, it's, yeah you know, I just, I, I kind of cling to the people who, talk to me more you know like in the groups and stuff like you guys right. and vanover and ferguson and you know those people man of uh, mario you know uh bob hay when he's back gets his internet privileges back on the fucking because he got banned out of groups hi bob <laughs> not for me but from facebook he can't comment in groups oh. right now uh because he's always i don't know man just for me you know like i don't know man i just yeah. uh you just gotta let you gotta let the you gotta roll with the punches, bro. You gotta let shit roll off your back. And, I know, but some know. of these people I I had a good relationship with. It's like, what did I do? It's like I, the guy Brian Bellows, man. We were always like extreme fans, getting on yeah. job jo and stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm called a narcissist and block. I did nothing to the guy. I was looking. He to probably him back on the podcast. He, he probably didn't like what me and Charles said about him being on the show that one time about the ghost episode. <laughs> Oh, he did? Why did I get picked on? <laughs> He's still friends with Charles. You get, I, oh, is he? I, I was never friends with him, so I don't know. But uh, yeah. we kind of yeah, laid it into it's cool. kind of hard. It's just like pe people who know me. It's like if I don't like somebody they love, I get blocked too. It uh, hurt people, in fact, like that. But let's get out of that, man. It's, it, it, I'm just ranting about people. Let's like roll with the punches, man. You know, I, I take a good ribbon, man. As long as you don't get personal, we can bust each other's balls all you want. Get on the Facebook groups. Get on the Freeform Rock podcast community. Get on the, the BS Sessions community. Get on there. We, we all conversate, man. We all bust each other's balls, and we don't get angry at each other. I said, be cool, man. Just come in. I'm not going to change just to make you happy. I'm going to be me, and if you don't like it, get the fuck out. I said, That's it. But um, sorry, man, I, I just need to get that out. This is like therapy. Like I was listening to Chris and Aaron today, you know, this is like rock and roll therapy here, you know, getting on a podcast, doing this stuff with you guys. You know, I agree with them. It's like, if I'm in a bad mood, it's like, I want to do a podcast. I used to call Lee, Lee, let's do a podcast or no, you know, during COVID we did a shit ton, but it's like, there's nothing to do. And it started Mark, this thing here. It was you originally called Mark and Jerry BS sessions. I started it. To get Jerry out there, man, because I love the guy and, he, and he's cool to hang out with. And it was an excuse to drink with him virtually. So that was a cool fucking thing. And you rule, Jerry. But what you know, you know there, there's controversy going on Facebook. And there's another one that came out today on Facebook, too. It, it's really important you guys know this. No, not the back button no, thing. Come oh, on. come on. I'm a set that up. <laughs> uh, come on. 
the back button. Three straight days. Facebook took away the back button. The back button's unfunctional. I go, what the fuck is the back button? Got a fucking real phone. Sorry, Android users. The back arrow's on top. <laughs> Just like, you know, that was fucking weird, dude. They were all going off on that, dude. Well, I thought it was some new like tech thing that came out that I totally fucking wasn't on board about because I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. I, I mean, well, because I had a hundred memes about Facebook took away the yeah. back button for like three, almost three days, man. It's like, God dang. And then today, people aren't getting their Facebook memories. I'm going, oh, fuck me. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if people can live without fucking their cell phones for a long period of time anymore, man. Dude, can you they go, want can Facebook you go, to can... show them their memories, and it wasn't there. They, I had no memories for today. It's like when I, when I went on a cruise a few years ago, and I couldn't use my cell phone because we are out of range, man. It sucked. <laughs> I mean, I know, you can't get right? on Facebook or anything. You could pay for like thirty dollars to get the internet there, but I ain't gonna fucking do that. But still, yeah, people are addicted to that shit, man. Yeah, we had to you run. Know, Go ahead. If I didn't have music on my phone, I can put my phone away or leave it at home and go to work and just come back to it after work. But since it plays music, that's why I, I really take it with me. But I can live off the internet. The phone's cool for me because I'm a fidgeter, so I got something to fidget with instead of those stupid spinners. So I fidget with my. I go. I just. <laughs> I'm the same like way. Sometimes. I just. Yeah. I have dice, I, I, I have a dice yeah, but if I do that, it make <laughs> it makes noise, and my wife hates. Like if I'm cr like I'll crunch a straw wrapper, and she goes, "Stop that! Stop that!" I go, yeah. "Fuck! I'll have to. I have to get my phone in." <laughs> you know, she hates yeah. it when I'm on my phone watching TV. All I'm doing is this, just playing with it. But uh, you, did you see anything about the back button and Facebook memories, Al? I saw people mention it, but I didn't pay attention to it. Yeah, I, I could, I could give a, I could give two fucks about it. I was making fun of them, and one chick goes, "That's mean." I go, "Newsflash: I Facebook I disabled people, the like, back button." I don't even know. I have no clue, man. I just you have an care. iPhone. It's on. It's like the bottom of their Android. There's a back button. They can hit it. And go back, and uh, ours is like on the arrow on the top of the Facebook page. Yeah. Go back, so they had a back button specifically for Androids. It was weird. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, man. Let's get to uh, let's get to some <laughs> good shit here. Hey, man, are you guys excited for this? Come on, you're excited for some Kiss news, aren't you? Yeah, I love it. All always. <laughs> Kiss announces pay-per-view event for the final Jeez. show. What do you think about that, Al? Well, if it's like that Dubai debacle, <laughs> have at it. <laughs> I'm not getting it. It'll pop up. It'll pop up on YouTube a half hour later, anyway. Yeah. I, I remember the, the Dubai one. Um, like I remember seeing after New Year's or whatever. Like the, the next morning, yeah. I was seeing clips of it on YouTube already, anyway. So. You know, it didn't matter. I don't know. I just, I'm not getting it. So, I mean, they, if you're a hardcore you just, Kiss fan. Everybody like, says it'll be out on YouTube soon after. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, so. Yeah, what do you think? Okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm done. No, if you're not done. Go for it, man. Sorry. Uh, no, the shows are happening in New York. I mean, I know a couple of friends of mine that are actually going to it. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to tell them to maybe uh, do a Facebook Live thing or something so I can see right. a little bit of it. I have, I really have no interest. I have no interest in seeing it anyway. It's I I saw the show. I saw their tour. I saw them twice on this tour. It's not going to be any different. So it's that's it. You know, I'm, I'm good. I took my daughter twice. She was, you know, and she was actually asking me again, like, you know, can I can we see Kiss again? I'm like, they're not coming anywhere near not here. So that's. It's really you saw them twice already, so you got to live with it. <laughs> yeah, they're actually coming to Nashville here in a little bit. I had no idea they're even coming here. I told you how much interest that. I mean, Nashville is kind of the closest they're coming to me, so I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'm, I would take a trip to Nashville to go. See. Like I said, I saw them twice on this tour, man. I'm good. The, the set list yeah. ain't changing. It's I know. You know, why am I gonna? I'm not gonna pay out of my ass to go see them. I <laughs> I didn't pay the last two times anyway, so. Why should I now? They probably sound worse than they did like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, no, I mean, if you're a Hero Hardcore Kiss fan, man, go for it. You know, I mean, so I'm I'm good with them. 
Jerry. Um, yeah, I agree with what Al said just about. I mean, if you want to see him, go see him. I have no desire to. I don't even think if they gave me. Well, if they gave me free tickets, I might go. What the hell? I, I, would, mean, I would uh, go if I got free tickets. Yeah, you know? but uh, yeah. And you mentioned the set list has been like the same the last freaking ten years, anyway. Um, so Pretty nothing much. new. Yeah, nothing new. It's it's time. Go away, please. Enjoy your retirement. Please enjoy your retirement. <laughs> but after these after these shows, they're doing a Chris Kiss cruise next year. It's just yeah, not and, the last and, show. Even though I know the Kiss cruise, even though I know the Kiss cruise is kind of different, they'll they'll play. Actually, if you want to hear deep cuts, the Kiss cruise is the thing yeah. to go on because they'll play. Yeah. You know, but anyway, but but you're paying out your ass to go on a cruise. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do they play every night when they're on the cruise, or just uh, like a finale show? I have no idea. I don't know. I know they play they play out of makeup, and then they do a show with makeup. So I, I they probably play yeah. like two or three shows on there. Yeah, I know they do yeah. an acoustic set. They do an acoustic set. I think as well. Sonny yeah. Pooney goes to those Chris Cru- cruises. He would he would know, wouldn't he? I never went to one, so I don't, no, I don't but know. Like, you know, I just Sonny Clooney, I, th- I, think he, I think he goes to those uh, cruises. Him and... Uh, and then there's other, band, there's other bands on there, too, which is yeah. cool, you yeah. know. Tim so. Bree, I think Sink and Stanley goes to those. <laughs> He's going to bug okay. Paul to the end, man. <laughs> hey, man, it, it's just stick and it's working, so great job, Tim. Hey, you uh, got response. You got responses from Paul, so I guess he's doing something. To... <laughs> he's getting blocked. Yeah, I said, yeah. "How many Twitter accounts do you have?" He said, "Many, many, 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 many." <laughs> I go, damn. Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts on that, Andy? No, no, I really don't. You know, like I said, I'm a mild kiss fan, so of course I'm not going to get it at all. So you know, but like, um, like Jerry and I were saying, you know, if you're a big kiss fan, because there are a lot of big kiss fans that will pay. To see this, and and it will be an event for for their family, and they'll gather together and they'll watch it together, and good for them, you know. Let them enjoy what they want to enjoy, but um, I'm not going to be one of those people. All right, hey, I, I don't know if you guys know this guy Matt Porter from the Kiss Room. I got yeah. a post right here by him that fucking made me chuckle. He says, says go to he says let's play a little drinking game for the next couple of weeks go to facebook like a radio station or more general music group do a do a shot every time some motherfucker posts a comment like i i saw der farewell tour 20 years ago or they shouldn't have just quit damn someone changed my dirty diaper uh you Guilty. know the kind of comment i'm talking <laughs> about you know them you'll see them comments from idiots <laughs> i guess, guess i'm an idiot because I feel that they should have retired 23 years ago. But I'm saying, I never post something like that, and I get blocked. All right, keep going. <laughs> I never call people out like that. That's like, I'm not rude. I'm a dick, but I'm not rude. But what do you think about that, man? Matt Porter just went off, man. I was like, damn. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing about that? Going well, around. no, I'm just... I mean, I feel I feel they should have retired twenty something years ago. That's what they were letting on to do. It was let on to be a retirement tour to begin with. So, I guess I'm one of those tours. I guess. All right, man. So let's move on to something else. Uh, I think this is interesting. I think we're all Aerosmith fans in here. So this is we we know he always got overlooked by Joe Perry, but when people say his work is being compared to Jeff Beck. And they're crediting Joe Perry. I was so upset. But people who actually listen can tell the difference. Brad Whitford on the highs and lows of Aerosmith's 50-year-old history. What do you think about that, uh, Al? About Brad Whitford being yeah, be, overshadowed? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, um, he's always been overshadowed. I mean, you know, the focal point's always been uh, Stephen and Joe. You know, they're the focal points of the band. But, I mean, to me, Brad is, like, the secret weapon in that band. Very so, like, a lot of the heavy tunes, a lot of great stuff, man. And uh, it, it's funny because, you know, but a lot of people do just think of him as, like, the rhythm guitar player. But he plays a lot of leads, too, man. He trades off. You don't know that until you go see them in concert, yeah. really, man. You see how many leads, like, you know, Brad does. And then, I've, I, you know, I went to a couple of... um 
of uh, Experience Hendrix tours, and he was on some of those too. And he comes oh, wow, out what? and play a Hendrix song. Yeah, dude, he fucking rips it up, man. I mean, he's a great guitar. He's technically he's actually better than Joe, but you know, Joe has the look and he has that 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 swagger that is the focal point of that band. Him and Steven. That's why Brad gets overshadowed. But you know, but Brad seems like a humble dude, man. He just lets it roll. He rolls with it, and he knows his role in the band. And uh, and uh, you know, but you know. A lot of times in concert, man, Steven goes over to Brad, man. He gives him a spotlight. You know, he'll call him out and be like, you know, you know, Brad and stuff like that. I mean, he gives him props. He doesn't, like, ignore him on stage or anything like that. He'll go over and, you know, he'll, like, fucking put his arm around him and, you know, whatever. Like, almost like he does with Joe. But, you know, all the pictures, all the photographers take the pictures of Joe and fucking Steven all the time. So that's the, you know... You know, Joe was the good-looking guitar player in that band. Not nothing against Brad, but he had that style and swagger that 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 gets you know the attention. So, but Brad's awesome, man. I love Brad. He's such an underrated guitar player, in my opinion, man. And without him, they wouldn't sound like Aerosmith, you know. So, what do you think about that, Jerry? I mean, I think Brad's actually doesn't care either way if he gets the popularity or not. He, seems like, he said like, it pissed like him said, off that people were giving really? his solos credit to Joe Perry. Well, that would piss me off. I guess that would he kind of said that, He I don't, said his work was I, compared to Jeff Beck and they're crediting Joe yeah, Perry. I, I was don't, so upset. So he was pissed. I don't I, I think don't Joe think, I think ahead, Joe no. Perry I don't mean to cut you off, Jerry, but I think Joe Perry recently kind of called that out too, saying that Brad should get like a lot of the credit because he's he's yeah. he he get I think Joe was saying in some article or some interview or something that uh that yeah, the Brad is not just a rhythm player. He plays leads too and writes songs and is a, you know, me and him trade off and all that stuff. So he gave him props and say Tantown saying that he Brad is not just a rhythm guitar player in the band. So so recently I know Joe Perry said something about that too. But go ahead, Jerry. No, I mean I didn't know that, but that's cool that the the band has his back on that. So that's cool. But I, I, you know, before this, I mean, I don't think he really cares. I think he's comfortable with his role in the band. But you know, I guess if you don't, I guess the people aren't giving him credit for what you do. I guess I can understand being upset. But uh, his playing speaks for itself. Like I said, if you ever see him live, dude, the dude rips live. Man, the whole band does. I mean, Tom Hamilton's a great yes. bass player. Joey Kramer was a great drummer. Um, this is an all-out great band, and I think they all knew their roles and they did they did it perfectly, man. It's I don't think the public sees that because you know Stephen and Joe take all the you know the spotlight from the band, so you know, so I get that. What do you think about it, Annie? Yeah, um, I want to just I mean, pretty much Jerry and Al already said everything. You know, when you see the pictures or the videos or concert footage, it's always Joe. And Steve, I mean, that's the way it is. And then even in the videos, they'll cut off to Brad every once in a while for a clip. But, you know, that's the way they sold the band. You know, but I'll be so pissed off, you know, I'll be upset too. All my life's work as being a musician who's traveled the world and has done this on stage, you would think that he should get more props than he does, but he doesn't. You know, and of course we know who they are, but but when it comes to the popularity, you know, everybody thinks it's you know Perry that does everything, and, and that Brad is just you know us over there on the side with with Hamilton. So you know it's unfair, but that was the the um the hand that he was dealt. When I was a fine musician. Yeah, when I was yeah, a kid, the, I, th I thought it was just Joe Perry who played the leads and. And Brad Whitford was the like rhythm guitarist just by looking at the videos when I got into them mm -hmm. on like permanent vacation. I thought it was Joe was the main lead in that band until I saw them on the permanent vacation tour. And I go, oh, fuck, this guy's ripping. <laughs> and I go, damn. Like you said, you need to see him live. But what were yeah. you going to say, Al? I heard you were going to say something. No, 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 I'm okay. no I, was, I was just going to say the actor Brad Whitford gets more, you know, Hits than the 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 actual Brad Woodford from Aerosmith, man. So that's how you know unknown he really is among people. You know, except for us in the music world, we know him pretty well. So yeah. I like and Brad then, Woodford. The Alf Brad Woodford, the actor, is pretty good too. So 
Yeah, I say it's all right. He goes by, I think it's Bradley Whitford, right? He goes by Bradley. Yeah. Oh, the good. guy from the one mo- the Vegas movie. Yeah, Tom, uh, uh, Billy Madison. He was the the dickhead that tried to take yeah. over the company. That guy, uh, Billy Madison yeah. Company. The company that yeah. he tried to take over his dad's company in that movie. Remember? Yeah, really oh, oh, okay. I was just thinking about this could be our milk. All right. <laughs> married to um, uh, the mom from Malcolm in the Middle. Oh God. All right, man. Let, uh, let's get to something I, I think is pretty cool. I'm trying to. We haven't had Bon Jovi news here in a while, but I think this is kind of old because I've been seeing this for like what two years now. Richie Sambor, I it's time to do it. It's like, and then you read the article. He's like, well, it's up to them. It's not. It sounds like he's Sammy Hagar trying to get back in Van Halen. Uh, what do you think about that, Al? Um. I don't think he sounds like Sam Sammy trying to get back in. <laughs> well, he, he keeps no Van, hinting he wants there is to go no, back, but he's no not Van talking Halen to them about get, it. There is no Van Halen to get back into. So I mean, um, <laughs> back back then when he's when he said oh. it's up to Eddie and shit, like you know. Um, I don't know, man. But I, I think they should reunite. I think you you know. I mean, I don't know, man. Last I remember, John sounded not too good on those last shows, though. <laughs> I don't know how his voice is holding up, but he uh, was good on the house pretty... is not for sale tour, the tour before, but that was like three years before that. So, yeah, no, this last run that he did, like the I don't know, did do like a year or two, yeah, huh? The twenty twenty tour, he did that album that was horrible. Yeah. No, this was after COVID. I think uh, they were uh, they did like a run or something. I remember yeah. like his his voice was very weak, man. He was even kind of talking, singing. He wasn't even. He had like no power in his voice. So anyway, going back, I mean, I think Sam Bora should rejoin, but I mean, John should get his voice vo- issues resolved if he hasn't already. And uh, I mean, I'd like to see him reunite, you know, be cool. Um, well, Richie would help him with his weak vocals. Uh, yeah. Unless yeah. Richie's got weak now. Well, I haven't heard Richie in a while. He did do that Oren Thonty stuff. I didn't like that, that, that duo album. It was kind of bad. I like them solo. Well, both of them better solo. But uh, that was a weird relationship. What do you think about that, Jerry? Richie Sambora back in Bon Jovi? We know that I'm a huge Bon Jovi fan. So, oh, yeah, uh... you love him. You're like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was a big part of the band. I mean, when you think of Bon oh, Jovi, yeah. I actually do think about Richie Sambora, you know, being mentioned in the same name. So if you're a diehard Bon Jovi fan, who would not want to see it? You know what I mean? I mean, Richie's a great guitar player. I'm not going to deny that, even though I'm not a Bon Jovi fan. But uh, yeah, I mean, for the fans, why not, man? If they can happen, let it happen. You know? What do you think about it, Andy? Yeah, you know, um, that's the only way I know Bon Jovi is with Richie Sambora. I don't know Bon Jovi any other way. Um, but is but having Richie Sambora, is that going to help going back to the glory days? I, I don't know. And besides, the fan base has gotten older. I mean, these chicks are now grandmas. <laughs> and when I saw this house is not for sale tour, there were some young hotties there, man. Yeah, because they have to drive their grandma to the show. <laughs> no, but, you know, it'll be great to have Richie <laughs> Sambo there. I think it would be cool to have him there because, you know, that was my first concert I ever went to. It was a slippery one, wet tour. Yeah, I think yeah. even better. Bring back Alex Jones. Oh, he's dead, and he died, didn't he? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, bring Don't bring him back. Sorry, bad call there. I was trying to make a joke. He'll but, be, uh, that was a bad he joke. Play, he didn't play anybody. They could just. Put I know. I'm just. I, that was a they bad. They just put a, his corpse up there. That's bad humor. Sorry. That was guys. a bad joke. I'm sorry yeah. about that one. I forgot for a now second. Now you maybe think. Well, it was just Halloween, so they could have put his corpse <laughs> up there for Halloween. But uh, so rest, um, in peace, me, rest in peace, dude. Rest in, in peace, dude. I think it'd be okay to have him back out there. Honestly, why not? All right, man. Any more things to say? We get to the main topic, Jerry. Oh, except that the uh, the Ace Frehley saying that uh, his album is going to make Paul Stanley sound stupid. Um, cool. I had that written down. And I skipped it. <laughs> I'm like, Ace, you don't need to come out with an album to make Paul sound, you know, like an idiot. So, uh, you know. Well, he's just mad because Paul said he hasn't done anything since he left Kiss. Yeah, he thinks. He's wow, lazy. did he really say that? Well, no. he thinks yeah. he's late. He he called late 
Ace Lazy, and, and he goes, yeah. look at all these albums I put out. <laughs> it's yeah. like, damn. I can't wait for it because I like Steve Brown. I think that he's a good songwriter and a good guitar player. I think he's going to really help Ace with this album. Probably be a more melodic album. I, I'm kind of looking forward to this one. What do you about you, Al? On, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too, man. Yeah, it might be a really good one. Yeah, Steve, it's, it's like Ace, oh, Steve Brown, Ace. the chick trickster dude. They put him down like big time. It's like. God damn. I like that other band he was in. That's uh, he was in another band that I like. Tokyo Motorfest. Like that's it. Yeah, Tokyo Motorfest. Yeah, I do like him the, in that band. Mr. Big Dude. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But uh, Don't yeah, I was never a huge huge Trickster fan, so I really can't. No, uh, that kept me away from the band. Was their name? I thought their name was horrible, so I never listened. Trickster. There's <laughs> lots uh, of bad names. Like uh, I just want to. I, I just want to see if Scribbles is actually watching it. Limp Biscuit sucks, dude. That's a horrible name for a group. <laughs> That's a horrible name, too. When bands have bad names, I don't even think about it. I just spoiler, spoiler alert. They're going to make the list for me next week. Okay. That's the only spoiler I'm giving. <laughs> All right, man. Let's get to... Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the Ace album. Al is looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to it, Andy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I really like his um, two... Two cover albums that he released, and that boy from the Bronx was pretty good. Um, I really liked that that album that he did in 2011. I think it was called Anomaly. Anomaly, yeah. yeah. That was a really good, strong album. Yeah, and also, like Space Invader was good too. I like that yes. one. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, he's. A, I mean, he puts good music out. Very interesting rock music out, yeah, and good. Yeah. And good for him, man. Really good, good for him because his ex bandmate Paul really just shits on him for almost no yeah, reason it, at all. You know what doesn't make sense? Paul Paul Stanley complains about being bullied as a kid, but he bullies so many other people that yeah, he's like the he's like the one who got bullied became a bully. Now I wonder if Ace can. You know, of course we've seen. Ace do shows at, at at clubs and this and that, but I, I wonder videos. if he can tour with Kiss. You know these big places, and you know have you know be out there for for long periods of time. Do you know he what I mean? An hour. He played ninety minutes when I saw him. It's pretty good. No, but like like tour day after day, every other day well, around no the world. Usually does that anymore. It's usually like three days. Really? Three days on, four days off now with the Wilbur bands. So, okay. and I saw Blue Oyster Cult, and they fucking look good for fucking some old men. Well, the two main guys, you know, pretty fucking. I've never, I wasn't a huge Blue Oyster Cult fan. I told you guys I was getting into them, and when I saw them live, I was like, "Fuck this band rules." <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Blue Oyster Cult lately. But uh, you guys want to get into the main topic now? Anybody else sure. got anything else? So yes. what are we doing, Jerry? We are doing the one and done with the Pink Floyd uh, discography. Everything except for the Endless River. Um, like I said, there's been, there's a few current, a few different eras of Pink Floyd that should be interesting to hear all of us talk about. So let's just get into it, man. Let's just do it. All right, man. We'll we'll start with uh, the Piper at the Gates of Dawn album. So you go first, Al. Want to know this? And then I gotta go take a piss. <laughs> uh, let's, the song I'm going to pick off of here is Astronomy Domine it's, it's always been my favorite song off of that album um, I, I, it's just to me it, it, it encapsulates the whole Sid era and um, I mean he's really only on that first album anyway a little bit of the second album and a bunch of singles but um, yeah that song is just it's to me that's the quintessential early Pink Floyd song you know this First song on that first album, man. It's awesome. I love it. So that's gonna be my pick. Andy. Um, I'm gonna um I considered that one and then I erased it and I um replaced it with something that sounded just as similar. I went with Interstellar Overdrive. Yeah. I really like those. That that would have been my runner up. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I kind of flipped them. Um, you know. As y'all see, as I go through this list, I love um, epic Pink Floyd songs. Yeah, I mean that's 
Um, to me, that's their bread and butter. To me, that's what makes them different from others is if they can stretch out 10-minute or 11-minute songs and still be interesting throughout. That's my Pink Floyd. What did I miss? Uh, yeah, Al picked uh, Astronomy, Astronomy Dominate, Dominate. and uh, Andy picked Interstellar Overdrive. Uh-huh. I am going to take Interstellar Overdrive myself. I love that tune. It's a killer nice. tune. Um, but I love Astronomy Dominate. That's a great song. I mean, Voiva did an excellent fucking cover of that song, dude. It's it's an incredible. Oh, I, it, it, it's funny, man. The cover, I might actually like the cover better than the original. I, I hate to say that, but you might be right. It's a kick-ass cover. I mean, there's some know. interesting songs on this album, like Bike. I mean, what a weird, trippy tune yeah. that is, man. Listen to it backwards, man. It'll fucking freak you out. <laughs> and, the, and the Scarecrow, I mean, just weird stuff on it. But uh, yeah, I prefer Interstellar Overdrive is the is my favorite song on that album. I think, I think with the Sid era, I think the I, I do love, I do love, um, I do love the first album. Like I, I, you know, I never. You know, when I was first in the Floyd, I, I was into the classic stuff, you know, from Dark Side on, you know, the classic mm-hmm. albums, yeah. you know. But I had, I had a friend, like, when I got into a band with him, he's a bass player. He loves, he's a huge Sid guy, you know, and he was, like, introducing me to, like, a lot of the earlier stuff. And then uh, I think, like, besides the first time, I think the the singles that they released with Sid were really good, man. If you like, like, the psychedelic kind of, Stuff like that. I loved it, like a lot of singles, like see Emily play, and like you know stuff like that, man. I, I thought it was really cool. Like, and he introduced me to like all that stuff, and and then he got me into earlier Floyd. And then when I, I you know, years ago, uh, years ago, a couple of years before, or a year or two before, um, it might have been like 2019. I went to go see uh, Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets, and he plays oh, yeah. everything like pre Dark Side. He won't. Yeah. He plays from metal back, you know what I mean? And I oh. thought it was a phenomenal show, man. I was like, it gave me a whole new appreciation of like that early stuff, like mm-hmm. seeing it live like that. And he and he, you know, his band was was awesome, man. Like, you know, he and the show that I saw actually um in New York at the Beacon Theater, he played two shows there, but the one that I was at, Roger Waters made a special appearance there. Wow! Okay. They, really, I never knew they, he came on stage with that. I never knew he did. Yes, that. and they did Interstellar Overdrive, man. Oh and it was, man! And I think, Dude. and it was funny, man, because I think even when Roger Waters came out, I think even Nick Mason looked uh, surprised. surprised. I don't even know if he knew <laughs> like he was gonna come there. It's, it's almost like Roger came out of, like backstage and just and Nick looked over and he was like surprised. And then they did Interstellar Overdrive together, which is awesome. So yeah. I got to see like the pretty special shows, like one off. Like, I don't think wow. I don't think yeah. Roger did any other shows with him. Like so, yeah, it was really cool. Anyway, back to the back to the show. And really, I think that's Nick Mason's best time with the band was metal before because they kind of took the um, and his drumming wasn't as adv- as as adventurous. adventurous. Yeah, because, man, a- back then the dude was awesome, but they oh, kind dude, of phenomenal man. That. Yeah, watch it, kind of got, when you watch that yeah. live. When you watch that live at Pompeii, man, it, just, oh, it shows you what a man. fucking phenomenal drummer he is. You yeah, know? really. Yeah. Yeah, starting uh. with Dark Side, they kind of they kind of made him a bit more of a straightforward uh, player. Yeah. But man, before that, dude, he was like almost like a Keith Moon, like kind of yeah. Mitch Mitchell, like very busy drummer, dude. Really, really good, man. Yeah. He was all. Agree. Yeah, he was all over the place. All right, man. So I guess it's my turn now. I'll go and then I'll I'll let Charles go last. Uh, Hey, Charles, how you doing? I'm going to pick Interstellar. I'm not a huge fan of the Sid Barrett era. I came into Pink Floyd from Dark Side On, like Al said. And when I did go back, I'm not kind of into hippy dippy psychedelic y shit. I don't like the Grateful Dead. I like some Jefferson Airplane, but when they get really psychedelic y, delicate, I go, fuck this shit. There's like I like half Jefferson. Uh, this thing, it, this is one of the songs I like off the album, Interstellar Overdrive. So yeah, great, but time. it's just kind of the, the guitar work on there is pretty fucking good. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and then uh, Charles, he picked the same song, Interstellar Overdrive, off Piper at the Gates of Dawn. 
Uh, so then we get to the next album, A Saucer Full of Secrets, Al. Uh, well, I'm going with Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. That's like <laughs> the centerpiece pretty yeah. much on that. Well, A Saucer Full of Secrets is kind of like a mini. Uh, it's an epic song to the title track. It's broken up into different suites. But I, I, I'm going to go with uh, Set the Controls. Um, I don't know. I just I think that's such an awesome early Floyd song, and then that state and that state that uh, that was a staple of their early, you know, live uh, repertoire. You know, I mean, again, when you go back to the live at Pompeii, and you see that man, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So, like, uh, there's two Andes now. What the hell's yeah. going on? Here? How did you do that? I thought I was oh, tripping. No, well, because I was on there and everybody was frozen, and I was talking. I was like, "Wow, they're really listening to me," and there was nobody moving. So I went in and went out. Hey, Andy's got a tweet. I think, we'll we'll call him Alejandro. Hi, Alejandro. Dude, up there in the corner. I I thought I was on LSD for a second. Know, man. Right? This is I'm perfect. Uh, in, interstellar Andy over here, bro. He fucking goes yeah. from one place to another. <laughs> That's some warp drive shit, there, man. No shit. Oh man, man. that would that was. That could have been more perfect than the song I was talking about. Right. Shit. <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my pick. And there's stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Set set the controls. Set the controls. I'm sorry. I'm, I was thinking Interstellar, but set the controls for the hardest song. That's my pick from Saucerful. Uh, How did I take this one off? I don't know. It's funny though. I don't know. It's gonna stay now. <laughs> Whatever. It's good because people are tripping. They're listening to a Pink Floyd episode. So <laughs> right. We're helping her trip, man. Drop some acid at this point in the episode. Take some mushrooms, man. You'll see two I guess that's Twin Randy. <laughs> Alejandro up there in the corner. <laughs> but uh, Andy, what what do you pick off Salsa for a little secret? What do you, what do you, what do you think about it, Andy number two? Andy number two. <laughs> Andy number oh, two. wow. So do I get to pick twice? That's awesome. Oh, you already picked on Salsa for Little Secrets? <laughs> no. no. I didn't. Yeah. Um, oh, I am twice, gonna I go, <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to go with Set the Controls. You know, to me, that was one of the best tracks. And, of course, Gilmore comes in, my favorite Pink Floyd member. Yeah. And um, so, you know, he's – and I'll talk more about his friendship – and relationship with Sid, the way that he was always the kindest one towards him. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to go with set the controls. All right, Jerry. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> one of their one of my favorite songs by him. I mean, it's such a cool. Just love that bass riff, man, all the way through. It's incredible sounding, dude. Um, I like Chug Band Blues too. You know, it's you know pretty much a Sid song, but uh, uh, I have to go with set the controls. I, I think mean, Sid a, is on. Sid is on like two, two or three tracks on yeah. this album, right? Yeah, Jug, yeah. Jug Band, is. Jug Jug Band Blues, and uh, Steve Saw, I think, or maybe not. He's on. Which... Well, I think he's on set the controls as well, but he's mixed very low. I, I thought Seesaw is a yeah. Gilmore Gilmore song. No, it is a it is a Gilmore song. Gilmore um, song, yeah. Trying to think of the. Other... I think the only writing credit that he does have is um, Jug, Jug Band, Band Blues. Blues. Yeah, yeah. Now um, he might be on others. But it was to the point where they didn't know what to do with them. To the point when they were going to one of their shows and they just didn't stop to pick them up. They just stopped, yeah. Yeah, they just <laughs> dudes. They were supposed dude, to go dude. pick up Sid, and they just passed by his house, just kept going. Yeah, and just yeah. never picked him up again. Real fucking, fucking tra- real tragedy, man. The dude was a talented yeah. guy, man. It really, fucked up. Dude, that was funny. Okay, hold on. There we go. There we go. Hey! I figured, hey! I figured out me. how to do it. Finally, I'm, I got I'm, te- I'm a technician here now. Hey, it's, I got it's like I got, I got rid of that alter ego of mine. <laughs> well, it's like it's like Pink Floyd when they were a five piece and then they didn't pick uh, yeah. Andy up. <laughs> <laughs> now we're about to the classic lineup here, man. All yeah. right. All right. All right. Ready so to I, go. I'll, I'll get to mine because I love David Gilmore. I pick Seesaw. Yeah. I like that song. Uh, Like I said, I don't know this era. And I was telling Jerry, I said, shit, like Sid's like all over these first albums until you get to like another album. It's like he's here and there and then David Gilmore's there. It's confusing. 
He's like they're jumping back and forth on each other since uh, it's only the Sid, first two. Well, no, not yeah. really. Really? Sid uh, never said Sid never really went away. <laughs> if you yeah, think about it's it. Weird. <laughs> Big All right, part but of Pink then Floyd, Charles the Charles picks Jugland Blues. Yeah, oh. and then we then we get to the music for more the movie. Al, I'm going with the Nile song, oh, dude. That's like Pink Floyd, almost like metal, it's like metal punk, almost <laughs> like like it, it's hard, man. Correct. It's really, I love I love Gil I love Gilmore's voice in that too, dude. It's yeah, uh, he's like. Like real edge to him, man. You know, it's really, really cool song, man. I love that song. That's the closest they got to being a metal band, right? You know? I, I agree. It's like pre, it's like pre metal. I mean, I think that was was that sixty nine. That was that album sixty nine. Sixty nine. The, the I mean, uh, more. Yeah, nineteen sixty nine. Yeah, sixty nine. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, pretty heavy track, man, for its time. Sixty nine, dudes. Sixty nine, dude. <laughs> Andy, you're muted, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I am. All right, go ahead. Oh, the Nile song. That's one of my favorite songs by Floyd. But even though more, it really is a good song. It really is a good album. It um, is. About the, there's about four great tracks on there that that um that I really dig. But um, I remember the first time I heard the Nile song, dude. It tripped me out. I was like, no yeah. way. This can't be them, and it sure is. And and I didn't even, I hadn't even heard that song until about the album. And I think it's the second track on that yeah. on that album, it dude. It really comes out of nowhere. You're like, whoa, because there's nothing else on that album that sounds like that. And in fact, after that, they get quiet. On, I think, um, Camberlin comes on after that. Cymbeline. So it goes back to a very, um. Solemn So yeah, that's a cool track. So I'm gonna go with um the Nile song. Gary. I love the Nile song, but I'm going with Cymbeline, man. I love that song. I love Ooh, how that's Mello, a good one too. I love yeah. Gilmore's voice in that song. It's a just a killer track. But I that fucking love the Nile. But I love the Nile song too, man. It's another great tune, but I like Cymbeline just a little bit better. Well, I, I picked the Nile song and you guys said it's like metal, dude. And uh, Jerry, you fucked up. We could have had a five-way fucking agreement <laughs> on this because Charles picked the same thing. He picked the Nile song. He yeah. fucking contrarian, you. What are you, Nate? <laughs> God damn, I'm just joking. But then we no, got Cymbeline. To... Cymbeline's a good tune, though, man. Well, I know. Great, I'm, I'm, great I'm just saying it was almost a clean sweep. <laughs> That's I'm like, damn. Almost like, again, I know I mentioned this before. It's like, there's supposed to be a movie for that, but I don't know where the hell to even get it or find it. I'd like to see it, actually. Probably so. England, right? It's a French movie yeah. that um, I don't think was even released in the U.S. Uh, you can probably find it. it on YouTube. I yeah, tried looking. Pretty- at, I, I found like one, like a little, like a 30-second clip. That's all I saw of it. Oh, wow. And there was, and there was no talking. It was no talking. It was just like these two people. Um, it's weird. Yeah, I think it's like an art film. Yeah, so I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. Well, if Floyd was if they, if they were involved with it, then it's definitely a, an art film, weird film. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah dang. So, uh, I I don't know if I got to say this album right. We're up to uh, Uma Guma. Uma Guma. Uma Guma. Yeah. I think it's I think it's Uma, ain't it? Uma Guma. Uma Guma. Yeah. Uma Guma. Uma Guma. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question. Mm-hmm. So these double albums, you're only still picking one song, right? Yeah. No, I think that we the wall was the only one I think that we missed, and we're doing two tracks. Oh, we are. Okay, and I'll just have to pick yeah. something else. Yeah. Okay. Well, it should be easy to pick a second track for the wall. Oh yeah, so. that's what I'm, I already know what it is. Yeah, me and Andy were talking about that. I don't think you were in that discussion. I'm sorry, I should have told you about that. Yeah, so uh, you didn't tell me about that. Oh, thanks. Sorry, I'm my always, bad. I'm always the last to know about these things, and I kind of like get you guys together here. I feel. Well, we talk about two different shows, and we kind of get them mixed sometimes when we're talking about. Well, I've them, done so. that, but then I come back at you five minutes. Oh, that was for this show, <laughs> so yeah. I figure it out in a few minutes. But then we get to what I just said, Uma Guma. Uma Guma. So Al, yeah. I'm going. I'm going with careful with that ox, Eugene. I know it's on the live side, but that was a B side for like a. Uh, I think it was just a single B side. So it's never really on a proper album besides Relics, but Relics is like 
was a, co- a compilation of all their yeah. a lot of their singles and stuff like that. So, but careful with that actually, Gene. I I love that song. It's a great one, man. And uh, uh, that's the one I'm going with, man. I love Gilmore's uh, guitar work on there. Yeah, Andy. And Relics is a really good compilation, man. That is fantastic. I love it. Um, but I stayed away from the live side. And since I stayed away from the live side, it was hard to find a track that I liked on here. Yeah. But with um, David Gilmore being my favorite, I went with the narrow way parts one, two, and three. You know, because on that side three and three and four, they each had room to make a composition. Right. And so it was either that one or Nick or Nick Mason's was really good too. But I went with David Gilmore's um, The Narrow Way. Jerry. Yeah, I went with Andy. I went with The Narrow Way. I think that's one of the only the one of the only really good tracks on it, in my opinion. I do like the trippiness of several small species. There's kind of trippy to listen to. The headphones and maybe a little weed. But uh, yeah, I got to go with uh, Narrow Way. And they're all it's all cool music. I mean, it's just it's weird in a way. You gotta it's be just, in the right headspace to yeah, listen to exactly. some of the early stuff. This is actually considered, I think, their worst album. I think I think it's worse than the final cut. I think people think it is. Yeah, I I kind of agree with you on that. But uh I I don't I go back to that album very rarely, like the sit albums. <laughs> so yeah, but, but uh, that live side is really good though. It is good, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why yeah, that live side well, the really reason- good. I, I I was gonna stay away from the live side, but like again, I pick careful with that axe because it's not on a proper Pink Floyd oh. album, so I, I didn't think that was kind of cheating. So I mean, it's a it's an actual song that it's not it's not like I wasn't gonna pick like Astronomy Domine because so I already picked that. It's on the first right. album or whatever. You know what else was on the was it Interstellar Overdrive was one of the live ones on there. That one is, and uh, Seth Controls was yeah, on there yeah. too. Or something controls, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you know, careful with that axe. I want to go with that one. So, all right. So then Jerry already said his, then I go with mine. I agree with you. Al. I like careful with that axe, Eugene. I don't like live albums. You know, if you ever listen to that metalstation.com, I'm always playing. If I find a live song by the band, I'm playing that over a studio, especially Rush. But my wife wants a studio when she picks a track, so I pick a live one after it. But, uh, <laughs> Get careful with that axe, and then uh, I guess Charles went to the live Uma Guma too. He said set the controls for the heart of the sun. Oh, so you went with, with the live, so you went yeah. with the live version, like a, okay. Yeah. And that's a better version as well than what's on the yeah, end. it is. Yeah. So, so now we get to Adam Hart Mother Al. <coughs> I'm going from uh, Adam Hart Mother. I'm going with Fat Old Son. Um, I saw David Gilmore's solo a few times, and he played that song. The last time I saw him at the Massacre Garden, he played that song, and it was fucking really great to hear that man. And uh, he and Andy, I think said, I think Andy said before, like he he really respects Sid, and he 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 really kind of does pay tribute to him too, like live in concert, like he'll do a Sid song. You know, which is really cool. I, I think that's really cool of David Gilmore to do that. You know, he doesn't he didn't have to do that, but you know, he really he really, you know, he pays respect to him, man. And I, I, I dig that. But I'm going with Fat Old Son off this album because I love the live version he he did on his last tour. So that's my pick. Andy. Hmm. Oh, the title track. Easy. Takes up side one. That that title track is Go Andy's, going for the, yes. Andy's going for the epics, like he says, man. Bre- bre- yeah. Breast, breast milky. You like breast milky? Right. <laughs> this, this, this is what me and you would do for rush epics. Yeah, no. we would pick that. We pick twenty one twelve side one. <laughs> so I but, understand um, where he's going on this. But um, I do want to mention. I do like to hear Alan's psychedelic <laughs> breakfast, yeah. but I won't make it my my. My uh, favorite, but it's so cool to hear coffee being made, bacon and eggs, you know, be cooking and just, it just. <laughs> cool. But um, I'm still gonna go with Adam Hart Mother, the the title track, and one of my favorite album covers by them, as well. Okay. I think the back is better. I think it's got three yeah. of them at least. 
<laughs> oh man so jerry yeah i'm gonna take fat old son too but i really love rich right rich right summer 68 man that's a great fucking song as well yeah very very beetle sounding that song is yeah um, but uh yeah and i love that you know did it on, on Endless River? Didn't they kind of like do a sequel to that or something on Endless 69, River? 69, I think. Or wait, what's it? Me, yeah, it was uh, this in play in the organ, if I recall. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I like Fat Old Son a little bit. It's a great fucking song. You know, the, me- the mellowness of it. Then it comes into that jam and solo at the end. Fucking great tune, man. That's my pick. Well, fucking Andy's the, fu- the, the freaking Jerry on this song. Because we would have had a clean sweep on here because I picked Fat Old Son and Charles picked Fat Old Son. <laughs> ah, two songs almost had a clean sweep and one guy had to say, go with this one. it's okay, man. I love it. <laughs> it's like, well, the thing, about, the thing about the early Pink Floyd songs, especially this album, there's only like six songs on the album, so you're going to you're gonna kind of cross a little bit. But, but yeah, I mean, but Fat Old Son's a great song, so I can see why that's the... Yeah, it's like you. What was the one you didn't pick? The Nile song, right? You didn't pick the Nile. I picked Cymbeline. Yeah. Yeah. So you ruined that one, and yeah. Andy ruined this one. You, you ruined, ruined it. it. Ruined, ruined it. it. Ruined it. I've I'm been ruined. ruined. Coming, coming from the guy that says, "Well, I know I, you guys are going to pick that, so I didn't pick it because I want to be original. I want to pick an original <laughs> pick." Yeah. I haven't done this on this on this episode at all. So <laughs> there, I, there's no I know something because. This is like my top in my top 20 group. It's like I'm not very versed on them because a lot of the early albums I didn't care for till Dark Side. So this this is not one of the groups I'm very versed in. But what I do know, I do know about them. So yeah. but you guys know so much. That's why it's awesome to have you three on here. The it's like I like Floyd way better than Kiss. <laughs> I'll just say that. Because the albums they made. I think rival kisses, but the great ones. But then we get to metal, which I used to say I thought it was metal. And then I, some of Pink Floyd fan corrected me and said it was metal. So I haven't called it metal in like 20 years. But uh, Al, what song do you pick? Uh, before I pick my song, now this is the album that I think Pink Floyd really kind of found their sound. Like they, this is where it starts becoming classic Pink Floyd, you know, like. The four of them, you know what I mean. I mean, the early stuff is still very experimental. Not not to say that there's no not experimental stuff on this and albums that follow, but but this is to me like when they solidified like their sound. They found their sound with this album, I believe, in my opinion. I and agree. and if it wasn't for Echoes, I would have picked Fearless because I love that song. But I got to pick Echoes, man. That's just like the centerpiece, classic fucking pink floyd epic man you know what i mean it's like when you watch the pompeii movie man they're doing that it just takes you to another level man it's just yeah. it's just fucking out of this world man and i i remember <laughs> funny story man people used to get pissed off at that shit too but we i used to go like back in the day like probably around when i graduated high school it was a billiards place that we used to go to me and my friends and we used to go hang out and play pool and stuff and they had a jukebox there, and they had Pink Floyd. We used to piss people off and put, play Echoes, man, because that's like the longest track. Yeah. And and the beginning, like five minutes, pretty much is like sound effects and shit. And people are like, what the fuck is this shit, man? <laughs> and it's like 23 minutes long. Oh, dude. And, and like and like me and my friends would just be cracking up, man, because people would just be like, what the hell is that ping, that ping sound, like in the beginning? Yeah. 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 And then you in know, the middle, you got, in the middle, you got that... Well, listen, man. You want to put a you put a quarter in for a song. You want to get your money's worth. Exactly. You want to play like, <laughs> like a twenty three minute song, bro. You know what I mean. So, but anyway, Echo, Echoes is my pick. So I love when I go into a bar and they have this machine where you could buy credits and pick songs on your phone. And I, I picked twenty one twelve by Rush. <laughs> And I was like, of course, these guys, <laughs> I pick out my money's worth on that fucking two dollars. But this was back in the day when it was the actual jukebox machine yeah. that had CDs yeah. in it and whatever, you know. Yeah. And you 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 put the quarter or fifty cents in or whatever, and you know, 
Just think if you were a kid and put a quarter and 50 cents and you had the discography that these digital jukeboxes have now. It's oh, like, yeah, man. Oh, God, you'd be playing deep tracks. All, everybody, what the fuck is going on in fucking Shaky's Pizza? <laughs> yeah, but I remember back in the day, they had the 45, so it was the B side. Yeah. The A side and the B side. Yeah. And I think they used to have one like that at the Pizza Hut near my house when I grew up. And we went to Pizza Hut like, like every Friday, my mom would give me a few quarters, and I'd be at the jukebox waiting for the pizza to come out. You know, yeah. I would be at the jukebox, the adults would be visiting, and I would pick my songs, and you know, it was a good time. I really, I really enjoyed that. The yeah, jukebox. Be, at the, be at the jukebox and playing video games. I remember yeah, when I was in Cub Scouts, that. they yeah. took us to Shaky's Pizza, and they had a jukebox. My mom gave me two dollars. I put all my quarters in there and played all the songs. And by the time we left, nobody got to play songs except me. <laughs> I, yeah. like, I filled that shit up. I think I played Jingle Bell Rock by Hollow Notes. <laughs> well, hey, it was about Crim's Christmas time. Uh, I like that version, man. But uh, the video metal. was horrible. But yeah, anyway, go ahead. Is whose turn is it? <laughs> Jerry's, right? And Andy, I think. Andy, Andy right? yeah, yeah, go Andy. Yeah, um, I really like the riff on the. I don't know, fearless. I like that rhythm, but man, nothing beats echoes off off this album. Echoes is just too much, man. It, it, it's great. It's everything. Every Pink Floyd signature sound is in that one song, and it's amazing. And, the, um, and that pop pay version is more, that pop yeah. version is incredible, man. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, it starts starting with the camera far away, right? And it's slowly like. Yeah, oh yeah. Approaches yeah. Them. yeah, that's really fucking yeah. cool, yeah. And then I think um I think uh um well when I just saw, went to go see Government Mule when they did Dark Side of Mule, they oh. did Echoes and they did Fearless too. Government which oh, wow. is really cool, man. If you ever get a chance to see that man, it's to do that, it's that's really really good, man. So you you know, David Gilmore has a really good interesting um live concert from Pompeii. I'm yeah, just, um, that's good. I'm just, yeah, more. he went back, he well, went back and did a concert yeah. there, right? Hey, his, yep. his live from Gadex is really good. I have yeah, that, that, too, man. that, that fucking good. album rules, man. Fucking that's rules. Just, I got that on CD, yeah, Fuck just yeah. on an island, just the whole on an island, on an right? island, dude. I, I Great, don't like freaking. Rattle That Lock that much, and I don't like his 80s stuff, it's too poppy for me. Mm. But I like Rattle That, I don't like Rattle That Lock, but I love On an Island and the live from Gadex, fucking great. I like his two first little albums. Like so good. <laughs> I mean, they sound like Pink Floyd. It sounds like Corey. I mean, are you calling pop? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's pop. It's more pop on on, on the like, old albums. Yeah, I, I don't, don't see. Have, I don't hear him as pop, but yeah, not at all. Album. I mean, it fits perfect right between Animals and the Wall. That's like the missing Pink Floyd album is that David Gilmore solo. I didn't like them. Right there in the middle. This his second one, maybe the one in '84, might be a little. Yeah, that's the one couple... I heard, and I didn't want to hear. Yeah, it anymore. it's slick. It's slick. Yeah, big time. It was an '84 good album, though. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like but it. the one he did in '78. Oof. Oh, you're talking about about um about face. Yeah, about face. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then I get to my track, and I, I haven't uh, done mine yet. Oh, go ahead, Jerry. I guess I'm gonna be the fucking uh, loser again. Uh -oh. I mean, this is a tough. One. This is the first album where it was really fucking tough. It really was for me. But I love Fearless, man. That's one of my favorite Floyd songs. I know. I know. I love the the just the fucking the G tuning on the guitar. It's incredible sounding. And I love Echoes. And I mentioned one of these days too. What a great instrumental that was. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, Nick yeah. Mason with Nick Mason with his only lead vocal. You know, or no, I think he's had a couple of these, but he had Corporal Clegg, he sings on that too. But uh, that's him saying, saying the one of these days I'm gonna cut you into little pieces. What a great fucking instrumental that was! The fucking slide guitar on that is fucking awesome. Oh, and, yeah, but I yeah. have to go with I mean, there's only one bad song on it, and it's a uh, San Tropez. I don't care for that. And, you know, Seamus is all right, it's kind of a goofy tune about a dog, but uh, um. Yeah, I gotta go with the fearless man. I love that song, man. I mean, that's one of my favorite Floyd songs. So, yeah, thanks for Turn. talking about the song I picked a lot. Uh, that was cool. Kind of stole my thunder on one of these days. 
<laughs> That's the song oh. I pick. I love the fucking instrumental. I love fucking instrumentals, man. It's a I'm great a fucking, one, man. It's a fucking one of the best ever, dude. It's up there with a lot of like YYZ for me. It's fucking great. Or fucking dude. It's just like it's an amazing instrumental, man. I I don't think if I was a rush fan, I wanted to liked Pink Floyd because I got into Rush before Floyd, and then I was more open to Floyd because of Rush. The way they did their time signatures and stuff. A lot of uh, Pink Floydish stuff too, except the first album, which everybody thinks is the best. Uh, that's Fly By Night, uh, the first Neil Peart album. Better. Hurt. Hurt. Peart. Whatever. And then Charles, uh, he picked Echoes. <laughs> so, Dude, I know uh, I mentioned this band. If you ever seen Brent Floyd, a cover band of them, dude, if you ever get a chance to see them, do it, man. You get blown away how good they really are. I mean, they have all the effects, inflatable pig and everything, dude. They put on a really good show. Really good Pink Floyd experience if you ever get a chance to see them do it. Brit, I Brit Floyd? Yeah. yeah. There's Brit, another one called Which One is Pink that I heard is really good. Yeah. And the Australian Pink Floyd show. They're good, too, but they're not as good as Brit Floyd, in my opinion. That Which One You is yeah. Pink plays a lot down here, and they pretty much sell out. Them and the Fab Four, the Beatles. Pretty good cover. Yeah, I still had a... A um, band called um, Us and Them, mm -hmm. and they would play like um, on New Year's Eve. For years, they played on New Year's Eve, and we would go and check them out. They were fantastic. You know, uh, just... you would go in at like eight p.m. and leave at two a.m. because <laughs> these dudes would play for a long time. Well, I'm just gonna say, man, if you're a band that has all these bands covering them, you must have did something right. right. You don't see any Firehouse cover bands. <laughs> even though i like playoffs but you're not gonna see them you see floyd you see zeppelin you see rush you see fucking beatles you don't see a, a good band has fucking millions of covers van halen has van halen atomic punks they even have a v v sammy hagger 5150 cover band and it's like they have a lot of fucking cover bands too but uh let's get into the next album obscured by clouds uh al I'm gonna go with um, what's on the deal. Um, again, I when I saw Gilmore live, he played that song as well, and uh, oh wow, it's it was, it was kind of cool that he busted that one out, man. So I'm going with that one off of Obscured. All right, Al. No, uh, Andy. You, you know what's so weird about this album? This album is never mentioned as being being anybody's favorite album. Or, or even part of their repertoire, but it's the it's the more easily accessible album that they ever made, in my opinion. It's um, the songs are simpler. It's more of a pop rock album. There's gentle acoustic work on here. With that being said, my favorite track on here is the Children's End. Childhood's End, yeah, okay. yeah. That's that's a good one too. That was almost going to be my pick. Yeah. I like the way that it ends and the way that it goes into um, uh, uh, um, Four Squares or the Square of Four. I forget the name of that song. Oh, um, uh, Free, free forms, Four, right? Free Four? Free four. Yeah. Free, free four. four. One, yeah. one, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it leads into that track. So, yeah. Right, Charles Hood and Jerry. I, I'm going to go with Free Four. Um, uh, I think it's a cool one of the coolest tunes they ever did. It's a really happy, instrumentally sounding song, but the lyrics, man, are depressing as fuck. Um, I love, and that, actually, if you listen to the new uh, Roger Waters' Dark Side of the Moon, if you're wondering what he's talking about and Breathe, the intro for it, he's singing the lyrics off that song. He's talking the lyrics in that song. Oh, wow. um, I don't know if you guys, have, you guys heard the Roger Waters version yet? No, I don't want to. It's, it's like a fucking children's storybook being narrated. It's, it's horrible. But, uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, thank childhood... you for listening to it for us and for the review. Well, it's no Floyd, need to man. listen to that. <laughs> it's like you taste something bad here. Taste this. No, it, thank you for telling me not to listen to it. I yeah, I mean that's it. my favorite song on it. And Andy mentioned uh, Childhood's Ends. That's a great fucking tune, man. And it is. It's 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 it's, it's sandwiched between two fucking classic Floyd albums, so it yes. kind of gets lost in the fire. So I like it. Um, but that anyway, I'm taking free four. And then uh, I'll take Childhood's End. And then uh, you guys all talked about it, so that's cool. 
And then Charles picked what's a uh, the deal. The deal. So he picked that. And so then we get to then we so get to the out. Huh? No, he picked the same as me then. That's yeah. Cool. And then we get to uh Dark Side of the Moon. The album that album. got me into Pink Floyd, by the way. So uh Al. I'm going with us and them. I've always loved that's always been one of my favorites off that album. I just love I don't know, I just love the flow of that song and just uh it, it just makes me feel like I don't know, it's just like such a mellow tune, but like you know, when you listen and for me, Dark Side I always have to listen to that like uh, the whole album, man. Yeah. I don't know, for for some reason it just you know, from start to finish, it's just one of those albums that should be listened to that way. But whenever it gets to us and them, it just I just it can kind of makes me float, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of has this floating ethereal quality to it. So um, it's always been one of my favorites on there. It's hard to pick a favorite on here because it's such classic. But um, but I, I, to be honest with you, us and them was pretty easy on it for me to pick. So that's my pick. Uh, Andy, I went ahead and picked the song that stuck out to me first, and it really is still my favorite track. On this album, um, time. That's a great one. Time is my favorite song on this album. Uh, I mean, or none. I mean, this was there. So good, and then, and then the ending when it goes back to the rhythm of how, of how the album started, back to that rhythm of breathe. You know, but I was like alternate lyrics. That's amazing. It's almost like a breathe. Re- it's almost like at the end, it's a breathe like reprieve. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. It's played together. If you, if they put time on the radio, you you usually hear that at the end a lot of times yeah. on classic rock radio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Jerry. Um, us and them. I mean, it's not, that's probably that, that possibly could be my favorite Pink Floyd song. Um, like you Great said, song. I'll just mention it. Just the fucking the. Uh, People think that ballads put people to sleep, man. But that song, for some reason, energized I me. Mean, there's something fucking really cool about that tune, man. It just affects me emotionally. Well, I love the build it. up, the build up in there too, man. It's kind yeah. of there's like a nice like with the with the the vocal harmonies and everything. It just mm-hmm. kind of it's it's really good. I mean, it's not just mellow all the time. It does build up. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, no. but that's weird because I like that song, but it's my least favorite on that album. But it, that background vocals, man. On that album, that song. yeah. I mean, it, it got a really cool fucking sax solo, man. People don't yeah. give the sax credit, yeah. but it really works. Hey, that I love the sax. I'm a huge um, Huey you know. Lewis and the News and John Cafford and the Beaver Brown Band fan. So, and then you got the they got the subtle vocal people talking in the in, in parts of it. It's just a great constructed song. Yeah. I love yeah. Time too. I love the, the intro. Of time is amazing, dude. With Nick hitting oh. those roto, hit his rotos, man. Just oh yeah, an incredible tune. But oh. us and them, man, by by a long shot, it's one of my, it probably is my favorite Pink Floyd song. And that deep bass, boom. yeah, saxophone, Johnny Cola, man, <laughs> and Clarence Clemens, man. You got you got to give the big man his due. Uh, but Johnny Cola and Clarence Clemens are my favorite saxophonist. They fucking had a groove. But then uh, I get to you picked yours, Jerry. Yep, us and them. Okay, and then uh, I picked. Uh, Charles said it's cheating, so he kind of I think he picked the same thing I did. Brain damage eclipse. Uh, I, I'm gonna you guys ever heard that thing where you played the fucking uh dark side of the moon when oh, the Wizard, uh, of, Wizard of, Oz of Oz starts? Yeah. Did you guys ever try that? Yeah. I have a I actually have a DVD with the art it's already overdubbed on there, like a bootleg DVD. Oh, you did. Yeah. There's only there's only one scene that matches up. It's the witch. The lunatic on say, the grass. No, when they say black, black, they show the black witch. When the and scarecrow blue, is dancing Dorothy. on the grass, dude. Uh, that, the scarecrow's a lunatic. He looks like uh, a lunatic. Okay, maybe I have to watch it again. But that's the only part <laughs> when I did it that I remember. You know. Yeah, but yeah. I do have a I do have a DVD like it's a fan like a bootleg DVD where they overdubbed, you know, uh, Dark Side onto the movie. So. You don't have to. You don't have to go to your stereo and sync it up. To, it's already <laughs> done for you. Dude, you know that, that I mean? is 
back then that was impossible to do, man. I'm sorry. Hey, wait, man. Come out on PBS. <laughs> you in. had a you had a fucking DVD and you had a fucking cassette. Uh, uh, that was just pure cool. Like, like they the, wrote, like they, they wrote. You started, with the, you started yeah, with the lion roars. You started with the lion roars. No, I mean it's just coincidence, man. I don't mm-hmm. know. You yeah, hoser, start, you, you had, had your chance. You had, you had to start it at when the lion roared the third time or something the like third that. Third time, yeah, you had to start it. Yeah. So. Re- reminds me of uh, Strange Brew. Hoser, you had your chance when they tried yeah. to get the lion to roar. Crank his tail, eh? Crank his tail. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> fucking great movie, Strange Brew. But uh, Charles picked the same thing, and he said, "I know cheating. I cheated too, Charles. <laughs> I picked the same one." Brain damage well, eclipse. Two, those two songs really kind of melt and they kind of go together, man. It's, I don't oh, know. yeah, it's one song. I, I, I've always thought it was one song. And yeah. Even on the live album, it's, it's like, like one song. They don't oh, divide yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time you hear it on the radio, it's together. Yeah. It's like Led Zeppelin, man. <laughs> All right. And we get to the next one Wish You Were Here. Uh, Al. I'm gonna go with Shine On parts one through five, the first song. Oh, shit. I gotta go with that one, man. I mean, to me, that's epic. like the epic, the build up, epic Gilmore's guitar coming in is so. I mean, whenever you heard that live, man, and like you hear that keyboard build up, and if, when you heard when you hear those three notes by Gilmore, man, it's like bam, fucking bam, bam, bam. Bam, now, you know, the four notes. Yeah. It's just like the crowd erupts, dude, and it's, yeah. that's such a feeling. When you saw them live, you know, and and uh, so I got to go with that one, man. Shine on the first one, parts one through five. I mean, they can I I could cheat and put the two parts together, but you know. yeah, dude, we always cheat on this show, man. It's cool, man. It's hard with Pink Floyd because they have a lot of songs like that. So I mean, you know, they just get the whole album. Just I picked twenty one twelve side one, it's just as one song. So there you go. But uh, Andy. Oh, this was a little hard for me because this album is fantastic. You know, and there's really not that many songs to choose from at all. There's, what, five? Yeah, five songs. Yeah. But I am going to go with Al. Um, Shout on you, Crazy Diamond, parts one through five. It's um amazing, amazing song. And all then right. I guess I would hate to to cheat but you said it was okay wish you were here a, would we, be my... we cheat on everybody's show man yeah. we don't <laughs> there's no rules we we give you parameters but you guys could go we don't have to you don't have to be inside the lines on this show all right man, man i picked the whole fucking album right? <laughs> even, yeah even 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 when we don't have rules everybody breaks them i break them all right? the time and i make the rules so. i know you made the rules and you broke them <laughs> man i haven't been i haven't been breaking them so <laughs> I know. It's good to be. It's good to be the king. What movie was I that might, from? I might I be breaking up on the next album, though. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. So, Jerry, did you go? Yeah, not yet. No, I'm gonna go with "Welcome to the Machine," man. That's a fucking killer tune, man. Um, but I love "Have a Cigar" as well. I mean, kind of an interesting story. I won't get into it. I'm sure you guys know why they picked Rory Harper to sing that Dude, song. Dude, I didn't know that was... Um, I, that sounded so much like Gilmore to me when I first heard that. Yeah. I still think it's Gilmore. <laughs> it's so close to his style. It's like weird. But welcome to the machine. The fucking... The power of them singing together and the weird effects around it, man. What a fucking... Just an amazing tune. And which... I mean, there's... Every song on this album is fucking legendary, dude. I yeah. mean, you, you you really don't hear you know parts six through nine on Shining Crane Diamond very much, but every other nah. song, man, you'll hear on the classic rock radio or any radio basically they still play these fucking songs. So yeah, yeah. You do. But my favorite is definitely Welcome to the Machine. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that, Jerry. That song is a fucking trip. You put on headphones, yeah. smoke a doobie, take a bong rip. You're like. Shh, Welcome, my son. Yeah, David Gilmore's different. voice is yeah. so fucking haunting. It's like so fucking. He's emoting the fucking stress of being in the machinery of life. It's like here you go. Fuck, I'm gonna throw you into the shit, and it sounds like you could hear David Gilmore's disgust with the machine. 
even though he didn't write it, it was what, what Roger Waters. Roger yeah, writes the lyrics. He fucking yes. emoted <laughs> that fucking song. That song is just so powerful. I fucking love it. It's like, like when people at work, I go, welcome to the machine. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, you're here. You're welcome to the machine. Remember, mm-hmm. you're just like a number, like Bob Seger says. And I go, who? Bob who? All right. Like they say, Pink Floyd who? But uh, yeah, that's mine. And then uh, Charles picked Wish You Were Here. I know you guys got the motherfucking story about this song. You guys got to say it since Charles picked it. Who wants to tell the story about this song? Well, when, they, when well when they were recording it, didn't sit up here in the studio. Yeah, and it was yeah. about him. Yeah, yeah. very. He was like he's very unrecognizable. He was like bald. He shaved his head. He was like put on a lot of weight. And he just yeah. had to sit there. He had this like fucking uh, stare that uh, David was saying it would just like pierce your soul if he started staring at you. He had this. It was just really fucking like, weird. Like and, uh, in the sun? Yeah. Black holes in the sun, yeah. I mean, it was a rock and roll fucking uh, what do you call it? Uh, legendary story and tragedy, but the story of that is is kind of amazing too. Especially because nobody knew who the hell it was at first. You know, like, yeah, is that Sid? That's Sid, and it was like, wow. But do you think sometimes maybe the band used his misfortunes, sure, to better the band or to sell well, then- the band more? I mean, it's an interesting topic. It worked. I mean, Sid got his royalties. That's one thing about David Gilmore, too. He made yeah. sure Sid got his royalties. So, you know. Right. I'm sure he got royalties for a lot of those albums. So, Right. Exactly. But, you know, sometimes it just feels feels that way, especially with this album and especially the movie The Wall, you know, because. Um, I think he just wrote about Waters what he knew. Is. It, you know. yeah. I, would rather, I would rather hear about Sid than fucking Roger Waters' dad every album but uh that's yeah. just my opinion but no but they had inserted parts of sid into the pink character in the movie yeah. like things that he would do they they yeah, insert like a, that into him but yeah, yeah it was something like a he saw of both yeah. he, you know writers write about what they live he lived that so right. he wrote about what he saw and what he saw in sid which is very it i think it's cool because he doesn't really say anything bad about sid it's just he's just writing what he saw this man go into lunacy, you know, and that's yeah. what he saw. Oh, yeah, but it probably dominated him, dominated his thoughts because he loved Sid so much and he hated seeing one of his best friends go through what he did. So that was kind of therapy for Roger to write about that stuff. I think that's just my opinion. I don't know. I, I might think about that a little bit different. I, I think it was more capitalizing. On his condition. All right, man. So then we get to uh, animals. Al. Oh man, this see, to me, this is the toughest one for me, man. This is my favorite Pink Floyd album of all time, and every song on here is fucking phenomenal. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about epics, bro, Andy? <laughs> you want to talk about epic songs, bro? Ultimately. I want to pick pigs three different ones. Um, I could have easily went dogs. I could have easily went sheep. I mean, you pick any. You, I mean, you could fucking throw a dart. But I'm going with the the pigs three different ones. Yeah, that's a great. Is that the re? Is this, that yeah. like the remix? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the remix. Final and, and CDs, live album, everything, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Blu-ray. Um, I so, haven't watched the Blu-ray yet. I need to see the Blu-ray DVD. Well, the Blu-ray is probably the album the mix around. Yeah. So, but what's the DVD? Know, is there any visuals on there? There's, oh, it's DD audio mixes. Yeah, Blu-ray audio, no video. Ah, oh, fuck. Which, that would be which cool is right up concert. my alley, man. Yeah, you know, that's the, that's the type of shit I love. Now, this is a Pink cool Floyd thing. is a band that's 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 uh, tailor made for like surround sound, man. I mean that's. If you have a good surround system, man, then you throw any Pink Floyd surround mix on, bro. It's yeah. it's like listening to the album. Like, you know, I remember when yeah. uh, Dark Side came out, uh, like the 30th anniversary of it. But shit, man, it was 20 years ago already. Uh, but they did a, a yeah. surround sound remix of it, you know, for the 30th anniversary of the album. And I remember getting it. It was just like, you know, I, I mean, I heard that album a million times. 
but hearing it in surround and hearing all this new shit, like hearing it for the first time again, it was it was such a great experience. So, you know, I, I suggest like if anybody has a surround out there, and to I get have some that on the of... Rush Movie Pictures box that I I keep saying we need to go out there and listen to it on our sound bar, and I got a bass and a two Vizio thing. It sounds pretty yeah. good. When I yeah. did a review oh, with the there it is. Rolling yeah. Star, oh, yeah. actually, look, look at that Oops. man. I love way. that. I love yeah. that album cover too. I just man. brought out my CDs. Why did I they... got that? I got that. I bought that. I don't think this is actually official, but I bought it anyway. It was all Discovery over, it was is official. official. Is it official one? I yeah, Discovery sure is that. official, dude. But uh, what I know cool. of Floyd, I know a lot of Floyd. Just the Floyd I like, like this. <laughs> I'm like yeah, Dark so Side I, of the Moon. Yeah, yeah. So picks three different ones is gonna be my pick. But again, this was the this out of all the albums, this was the toughest one for me, man, because this is my favorite Floyd album. It's it's the one in the classic era that's not burnt down the radio. None of these songs are burnt down the radio. I can no. throw this album on, bro, and it just sounds great straight through all the time, man. It's like there's no burnout factor, nothing. I'm jamming very this shit to work tomorrow, man. Fuck yeah. It's, it's, it's very yeah. rare that you know these songs get played on the radio, you know, unless it's yeah. like satellite radio or something. But yeah, you know. Yeah. Anyway, mean, that's my pick. All Picks right, Andy. Ones. Um, my, the one that I picked is the one that, that has the a name of an animal on the title. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, but Dude, dogs. I cheated, man. Dogs. Dude, I'm telling you, dogs is amazing track. Yeah, it's so great. So I'm going with dogs. Jerry, I, I'm just gonna, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna say this right now. There's no wrong answers here. So no. <laughs> and it's so funny because I was playing because I got that um uh, the 2018 mix on CD, and I was going to the dog park. I was uh, I was listening to it, and in the middle, the dog started barking. Man, you see my my dog? We were still in the car, and she's all just looking around. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, dude. yeah. And she's like. Wait, where the hell is that coming from? <laughs> so Jerry. Oh, it's, uh, dogs. It's, this was pretty, actually, this was actually really easy for me because I love dogs. What a great song that is, man. Yeah, that was easy for me. Just that acoustic riff is just cool with that weird keyboard that Rick, Rick plays through it is really fucking amazing sounding. And it's my, one of my favorite Debbie KRP in Cincinnati episodes when Johnny Fever is sleeping, listening to the, the middle part of Dogs. Was just a fucking classic television moment, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's 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 a great tune, man. You know, people yeah. bitch about Roger, but he he does have some, I think, some political issues. But that's a great fucking songwriter, dude. He really a lyric writer, man. I mean, fucking great lyrics, man. But yeah, I'm taking dogs. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the uh, dogs, also, man. Uh, I have played, you know, I played the long shit and fucking that metal station dot com. I'll play the twenty minute song. I'll play long versions of Deep Purple. I played Dogs, Jerry. You picked it. <laughs> yeah. I picked Dogs before. Man. Yeah, that was a day, that was a day. I think I picked like every song was ten minutes long. I didn't, <laughs> oh, realize, yeah. I didn't realize, and I'm like, I'm like, wait a sec. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know that every song I hey, picked. Hey, I, was 10 I do a five hour show, dude. It's fucking <laughs> cool, dude. That's why I like playing a long shit. That's why I don't want to do a two or three hour show. I like doing a five hour show where I could put a twenty one minute song in there, and I still got plenty to pick. So I like doing that shit because I like playing the long shit. But dogs and then Charles picked sheep. Good tune. Mm. Great fucking riff, man. Great guitar. Another riff. one, man. I mean, yeah. again, there's no wrong answers here. Oh. Well, Charles didn't know about picking two of the wall songs, just letting you guys know that. So I don't know what he would pick. So I'm just gonna pick his one on there, but I do. So we get to the wall, man. We'll uh, say Charles, Charles second pick is Vera. We'll say that. <laughs> Vera Lynn. Uh so Al, what's your pick off the wall? Two picks off the wall. So the picks though, let me ask you this. It does it have to be like one from each record, or it could be just two picks. Nah, either one. Either one. We good. don't have rules, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Just do what you want. <laughs> All right. Well, one of my picks is Goodbye Blue Sky. I always love that song. I, it's one of my favorites on that album. I love the vocal harmonies on that. Um, when I saw Roger Waters do the wall live and they went into that, it was like one of my favorite moments in the show. Um, the video from it, from the, the the movies, pretty dark, you know? Oh, yeah. 
You know, mm -hmm. I, I posted on my page a couple of times, you know, but um, it just shows like a lot of death and, you know, destruction and shit like that. But, uh, but yeah. that's like part of the, the story, man, you know, but, uh, and then my second pick, I, I'm just going to pick comfortably now because it's such a classic and the, the Gilmore solo and that is just, it's like a top five solo of all time. It's up there with like stairway and shit. So, I mean. It's that to me. That's like their stairway. So, yeah, comfortably numb and uh, goodbye, blue sky. Those are my two picks. All right. So then, Andy. Yeah, um, I picked one from um, each desk. Um, the first one I'm going to go with one of my turns. Love that track. <laughs> Fucking great that's song, a, dude. Yes, great song. And in the movie, which that's one? one of the wait, wait, best. Wait, which one did you pick? A uh, one of my turns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Skin on yeah, that was a that was an awesome part in the movie, man. He, he just yeah, lost it with that, that chick. Yeah. Really yeah. Want to take a bath? Yeah. Are you feeling okay? <laughs> Hello. Are all these your guitars? Yeah. Rock, now, Mark, now Mark doesn't like Bob Geldof, but he was fucking pretty killer in that movie. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Bob that's like Bob Geldof. That's the only thing that I know I'm in. Yeah. That and that Boomtown Rats. Boomtown but really Rats were horrible. I don't but, like. Boomtown Rats. I like Mondays okay. more than them. Live Aids. I mean, well, he cool did a good job there, but he shouldn't sing, of and he shouldn't he fucking kill Michael Hutchins. All right, man. Uh, uh, well, so Michael Hutchins. Well, he. There's a story about that where he had a kid with his ex-wife, and then he yeah. couldn't see his kid on Christmas because God, Bob Geldof was taking care of her, so he got depressed right. and accidentally killed himself. So there you go. Not his I okay. don't don't believe that at all. But no, it's a story. It's this. a true story. It's a story I'll based on you, what? I'll send you the story. Uh, send me the no, link to that because I've never no, seen he, he, anything on that. Bob Geldof's wife, him and she was a, a TV host in England. They right. got together. Uh, they got they were separated. She got together. With Michael Hutchins had a baby with him, and then she was drugged out, so she died. She he wanted to see her on Christmas as kid, and Bob Geldof was taking care of her because she was on drugs and said no to him. So he got depressed. Fucking died. Okay, well, accident. whatever. Okay. Right. Well, then he, I thought he hung himself whacking off or something. Yeah, because he was depressed. Yeah. He didn't get to see his kid. Or, I love in excess, man. You know, fucking. I mean, he, he, was, he was whacking off and hung himself? Well, so did, well, so did it's Chris a, Cornell. It's supposed to it's supposed to make the yeah. feeling the the know. kung fu guy, the kung fu guy too. What was his name? Uh, David Carradine. Fucking David Carradine did this. And thing, Chris yeah. Cornell. I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I'm fine with you know the way. I don't want to you know talk about sex lives or anything. But <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty content with what I what I do. So. Sex lies and videotape, man. <laughs> I'm 52. My experiment in ages are over, man. So, you know, I'm content. <laughs> if he got a Nita Strauss, you would experiment. What the fuck? Dude? Where's, where's, no where's, where's my wife? Where's no my wife? Uh, <laughs> you yes. would learn how to experiment. Don't uh, give it a, like she so would have me. 52 year old fat fuck like me. She'd have did me. Did you pick right your there. second track off the no. wall? Oh, Andy. Yeah. Andy. Oh yeah, I'm comfortably numb on side two. But man, there are so many. There were so many good songs on the wall. I mean, you could have gone either way. You know, you could have gone. Well, all well, right, Jerry. Well, you know, comfortably numb, definitely for sure. I mean, one of the best, actually, in my opinion, I think it's the best rock guitar solo ever. Uh, but my second song is going to be "Hey You," man. I fucking love that song too, man. Why they left it out of the movie? I think there's a reason why they left it out of the movie. I can't recall at the moment, but uh, I saw the the scene that's on my DVD. And I don't know; it looked like a pretty cool scene, so uh, I don't know why they cut it out. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love what David Gilmore did with his guitar. He put like really high pitched strings on to get that sound. Um, just a fucking great tune. There's, I mean, there's all. I mean, one of my turns, Young Lust, Good Blue Blue Sky, Mother. I mean. Don't yeah. leave me now in the flesh. I mean, yeah. fucking just. You got to pick two song. songs off this album. It's like very hard. Exactly. I mean, fucking a uh, great album, dude. But those are my two picks. It's like it was easier when I thought it was only one track because 
I had to pick like one of the greatest guitar solos of all time and comfortably numb. Yeah. And then now I got to pick two and I'm like going fucking mother. Goodbye. Blue sky, blah, 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 blah. The trial, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck, I got to go with fucking mother. Uh, that great song movie. is fucking mother. Do you think they'll drop the bomb? The fucking harmonies on there. And then fucking Roger comes in with his like, evil sounding voice but they gotta take your home he's the mother just fucking yelling at david i'm going this is fucking amazing it's like they're playing parts in the song i fucking love mother but i didn't care for the I, I didn't care for the movie how they redid that song in that movie it sounded like a with like there's little tinker toy sounds or like a xylophone in parts of the song i didn't care yeah, for but it. that song is I, so I, like, powerful, I like though i love the scene though the scene was awesome in the movie that's, but, that uh, sets yeah. up how he went nuts in the wall that song right there is I, gotta like, go. I, I no i no i get that okay i gotta go guys I'll, I'll all right Andy. all right all right but anyway okay. okay we'll get this going then sorry all right i'm sorry guys no, you're fine right. you had two more songs all right. All right, Jerry. I just gave you my two. All right, then me. I um, already said mine. And then uh, Charles is Nobody Home. And then we get to the next album, which is the final cut. Uh, Al. I'm going with uh, Not Now, John. Uh, I love I love Gilmore solo on that. Um I don't know, man. It's, that, that's an album I don't revisit very much, but I, I should... I remember I saw Roger live uh, 2007, I think. And he played a couple of quite a few songs off of uh, Final Cut. I think uh, Fletcher Memorial Home and um, um, let's see the other one. Uh, Keep Your Hands Off My Filthy Dessert. I think he did that one. I don't know. He did a couple of songs off of this album. But not now, John. I, I think I re, when I listen to it, I I love the solo that David does, and, mm. and David. Uh, I mean, they were at odds at this point, man. It's, this is like the, pretty much the final straw, you know. I mean, if the final cut's such a good name for that album because it really right. is like the final. Yeah, he you know. fired Rick. He had fired Rick. Roger fired Rick. So he wasn't even on. Yeah. The album, so. But that's my pick. All right, uh, Jerry. I love not now, John, but I think this is one of. What, the song I'm picking, I think, is one of Roger's best vocals, and that's the title track, man. I fucking love this song, The Final Cut, man. It's such an emotional tune, man, about, you know, I, you know, it brings me to, you know, I, I get emotional when I hear it because it's such a fucking great performance by Roger. So uh, that's the one I'm picking off it. But I love Not Now, John, dude. That's a great song, too. This this album was really kind of like um, kind of an extension of The Wall a bit, right? Right, Yeah. Yeah, I think and this isn't confirmed, but I think he actually came with both of them almost. I think and say pick one or something like that. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I did hear that. So, um, what was that? I, I thought they he brought both of those, didn't he? At the same time, Roger okay. did or both ideas, I think, and then they they did, chose to go with the wall, which uh, that's true. Then they actually went with the right one. But uh, oh yeah, I think that's what I heard about that. Yeah, I'm not as much as as up in you know the the, the 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 you know the the news like you guys are, but you know I, I believe that's what I heard a while back. I'm not sure. So, all right, man. Well, what so, I always thought was I thought I thought the wall was going to be a triple album, and maybe then, that's what it I, was. I I guess um, you know, the record company might have been against that. You know, it would have been like too expensive or whatever, so they cut it down to a double. And this may have been like you know stuff that was left over. Right, that, that not, could be it too. Not completely left over, but I mean, like I'm sure Roger wrote new stuff for it too. But, but uh, his whole concept, I guess, you know, was a triple album originally. Anyway, you know, that's that's I think I think I I think I read that a lot a long time ago. So, all right. So Andy so, left us. Yeah, Andy left. I I don't know what happened. Uh, when the uh, wife calls, uh, when the wife calls, you got to go. Happy wife, happy life, happy wife, right? <laughs> So then yeah, Charles picked go. Nobody Home, which is a good fucking track, too. And then uh, now we're on the final cut, Al. <coughs> what's that? What's that? Nobody, home, no, no, nobody Home was on the wall. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We're on the final cut. Whose turn is it? Oh. I just went, so it's your turn. I, so it's I, my I, turn. I went, too. So. I picked Not Now, John. Okay, yeah. That's what I picked. 
Yeah. So then we get to uh and uh Charles picked that too. So uh almost a clean sweep. <laughs> and then we get to momentary lapse of reason. Uh Al. And the show um, hasn't even been two hours, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm going with Anna turning away on this one. Um always love that song. Um that's just to me that's like classic Floyd, you know. Uh even though now it's just like uh, a Gilmore led. But I'm I'm such a Gilmore fan anyway. I, I love the albums with him as well. I mean, I know some people are like, "Oh, it's not Pink Floyd without Roger," but and it's it did lose a certain it did lose a certain thing without him. But I still love David Gilmore, and I you know, and the two albums that he did with them were are still good in my opinion. So I do think of him a little more as a Gilmore. A little more Gilmore solo, but still Gilmore solo is fucking Pink Floyd. He's the sound of Pink Floyd, so yeah. you know what I mean. So, but I'm going on to turning away. That's my pick. Love that what, song. What's yours, Jerry? I love on the turning away. That's a great pick. I'm have to go with one slip, man. I love that song. I think it's, it's a good uh, one too. Song that. Fucking Tony Levin, bass playing the bass on that album, dude. Killer fucking sounds, man. Sorrow is another great fucking riff. That fucking opening riff, man, is just amazing. I thought you didn't like what this the, album. What are you talking about? I was just joking. I said, I, if I was going to pick to put an album out like you're displaying it, I wouldn't have picked that one. Is what I meant. Well, I but, just, uh, I, no, nah, dude, I love the album, dude. I mean, uh, yeah, that's my pick. One slip. So uh, I picked mine. I like Dogs of War with the great Cozy Pal on drums. Great song too. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Song. I forgot Cozy played on that one. Yeah, Cozy played on that one, man. So a fucking great drum work on that. Didn't uh, didn't Carmine a piece play on this album too? I think so. Look, Bob Ezrin didn't like Nick Mason, I guess, man. Yeah, right. I don't know why he's a great drummer. I don't know, man. It's like, what the fuck? Ezrin, Ezrin's weird sometimes with his choices, man. Yeah, Carmen <laughs> yeah. played on this album. Yeah, he had a lot of drummers on this fucking album. Yeah. But he played it well live. I've seen the video. I, I saw them on the, the next album tour. He's really good. Uh, so momentary lapse of reason, my turn, right? I picked Dogs of War and uh, uh, Charles picked Learning to Fly, which is a great song, man. Yeah, it is. I fucking love that. Song. That's a great album. And then we get to the album I don't really care for. We did this on Black Spinner Circle podcast, but Jer- uh, Al, what did you pick off the division bill? I'm picking the last track, High Hopes. <laughs> um, I think that's a great song. I do like this album a lot. It's, I saw them on this tour. Uh, Giant Stadium in Meadowlands, nineteen ninety four, and uh, phenomenal show. Um, I could have seen them on a momentary lapse tour, but um, I know a couple of friends of mine went. I didn't end up going, which I regret now. But uh, I did see them on this tour, though. So high hopes. I'm picking that one, the last song. I do love this album a lot, though. I think I actually like this album better than uh, Momentary for yeah, me. I do too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what I meant, Jerry. You like this out al- you like this album better than Momentary. But yeah. what's your what's your track off of Division Bill? You know, for the longest time it, it was always Take It Back. That's a great tune. I love the the Ebo sound that Gilmore has on this album. But I've really fallen in love with Rick Wright's wearing the inside out, man. Ooh, good. That's one. just a just a fucking just a it's almost like a dream the way it's, the song sounds. It's so fucking cool. I mean, there's a lot of songs. Keep talking is cool. Lost for words. High hopes. I mean, learn. I mean, uh, just loaded with great songs. What do you want from me? I mean, you know, I thought it was, you know, hey, but, I gotta give a shout out to Rick Wright too, man. Uh, I, I recently like I revisited his album Broken China. Check that album out, man. It's a good album, dude. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I mean, his. His solo stuff gets uh, it falls under the radar. Not a lot of people really, you know, unless you're a hardcore, hardcore Floyd fan, that mm-hmm. you get all the side projects and all that stuff. But I, 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 I threw that album up on YouTube the other day, and I listened to it. And I was like, damn. I mean, Rick Wright was right with David Gilmore. Man, he was him and Gilmore were the sound. Man, they were. Oh, yeah. That's why when Gilmore went on tour. For the on an island man, he I mean he bought fucking yeah. Rick with him, man. And to me, that was like you're pretty much seeing Floyd right there, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So incredible. 
So yeah, that's why I like this album better than Momentary because it was more of a Pink Floyd album because the other three were able to contribute a little bit more to it than yeah. Momentary Lapse of Reason. So yeah, yeah, and Rick was just an incredible fucking keyboard player. I mean, he, he, the first the, I mean, the first era of Pink Floyd, his keyboards were amazing, dude. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of on and off on the albums after. Uh, I guess the he did wall. most. Of it. Yeah, the Wall. Yeah. Um, well. He really didn't do much on the wall, if I remember right. He did some, but yeah, Roger fired him. That was all. Wall. That was all. Uh, uh, fucking. Uh, Roger fired know. him during the wall, right? Kind of bad with names. Yeah, he got fired during the wall. Yeah, but he's yeah, smart but because that money that tour lost revenue, but since Rick was a hired musician, he was the only one that made money off of the band. <laughs> so, so in a way, yeah. So in a way, because he was a hired, because he yeah. hired him back, but just as a hired musician, not as a yep. part of the band. Right. Yep. Yeah, dude, you're right, man. He made money and the rest <laughs> of the guys lost. Exactly. So fuck so you, he Roger. Got the, he got the last <laughs> laugh on that one, man. Yep. All right, man. So I picked uh, High Hopes. I think that's basically one of the two songs I liked off that album. I don't like it. I like Momentary better, but it it's not bad it's just not one of my favorite pink floyd albums animals is and i like momentary better that was kind of let down for me and plus i saw that tour the uh, rose bowl my friend brought me ragweed and i couldn't get high at a pink floyd concert so maybe that's why this album pisses me off uh okay. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> i fucking looked at him and socked him i bought the tickets and you brought me fucking shake fucking asshole <laughs> at a pink floyd show but uh high hopes and then charles picked high hopes man uh so i'm sorry we didn't get to hear andy rodriguez's uh last three picks man yeah because he was my he, he loved the division bell too so it would be nice to have him on here talking i know about i it. think he <laughs> picked high hopes i don't know uh andy if you watch this uh leave in the comments what your last three picks were so the people who watch this episode will know what they are because i don't know man we we haven't went that long it's not it's under two hours right now yeah so, uh I, I understand we did one of those three hour shows that has happened here. But like the uh, four and a half the four hour rush show. That was a long one. <laughs> God. Yeah, that was that a long was an one. epic. Oh god. <laughs> All right, man. Um let's uh got any final thoughts, Jerry? Nah, I mean thank you for guys for doing this, man. It's one of my favorite bands. So it was uh nice talking about Pink Floyd. Uh, always anytime Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin is mentioned, count me in, man. Same here. Yeah. Yep. So Al, any any final thoughts and and a promotion no, stuff, thank, man? No, thanks. Thanks for inviting me on as usual. You know, I always love coming on the show, and uh, we always talk about some good shit. And that's really it. You know, uh, be cool if you podcast out, YouTube, Facebook uh, group. Uh, check it out, man. Yep, and right. uh, I'm down here. I'm down here for work another day and then I'm going to go home and then uh, enjoy the weekend with my family and, uh, and uh, back to normal work uh, Monday. So nice. Yeah. Uh, well, next week we're doing a, the 11 worst cover songs. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> if you went not if you want in on that, Al, let, let us know. I'll uh, let you know, man. Bill Roseberry will be on there with us. Who so, dude. Uh, so uh, that's good. Bill, Ro- Bill, Ro- Bill Roseberry. You know, oh, okay. met from the Metal Mike show. Okay, uh, he'll be on there next week, and also uh, check out the Freeform Rock podcast. Uh, tonight is Thursday. This episode will come out on Thursday, so tomorrow, uh, what is it? Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers. Do that episode. That's uh, brought to you by the star of the Freeform Rock podcast, Mr. Charles Trainer. Which, by the way, Saturday is Veterans Day, so us at the BS Sessions. We like to say thank you for your service for all you veterans out there. Yep. We have a veteran on here, uh, Mr. Charles Trainer. Thank you for your service, man. We love you, brother. Can't wait for you to do the our top eleven of two thousand twenty three on January fourth because he said he will be on that episode. Good. But, uh, just the final thing, man. Thank you guys for like, share, and subscribe. Give that thumbs up. Check out the Freeform Rock podcast, man. The ACDC episode with JC. Uh, Jeff Beers is doing really well. That dude is rad. Jeff, if you're watching, you're rad. All right, guys. <laughs> thank you and good night, man. Mark right, and Jerry, care, have a great night, man. Thank, thank you, guys. Take care. Bye. Peace. Peace.